Hi friends, welcome to Jennifer Parsley Wellness. Today is day 59 of my journey to release 30 pounds. So almost two thirds of the way through or two months last day of February. So two months into this plan. It's looking like based on some of the way in updates you've been seeing that I'm gonna go a little bit past that. I'm regrouping, remotivating myself. June 1st is 12 weeks from today and I can lose 20 pounds to be at my 125 where I wanna be in my 50s or go even further and reach where my beautiful, lovely mentor, same age, same body type, used to be overweight, same situation as me, Julie Christensen of Protective Diet, as she hangs out right around 120. So who knows, maybe I can do a stretch goal by June 1st, but I'm still highly committed on my plan to release these pounds and weigh what I want to weigh, lower end of my BMI in my 50s. I am back to quite a bit of fasting, letting my body rest. I'm off the protein powders and kind of fake things. <laughs> back to the pure plan that I started with, whole food, plant-based, no oil, and quite a bit of fasting added in. Yesterday, I had about a three hour eating window and I'm considering anything one to six hours of eating window a success. So either just dinner, kind of one meal a day eating, which is what I'm aiming for today. Or yesterday, I had a snack right about five o'clock, which was homemade whole grain bread with hummus. It was a beautiful, wonderful snack. And if I get kind of crazy, low blood sugary today, I may have that same snack again. Whole grain bread that I made in my little bread maker at home is a rye bread with some hummus. Really good snack. Um, and then I'm gonna have my homemade German potato salad, some soy curls, which the only ingredient in them are organic soybeans, or maybe not organic, but non-GMO soybeans. And I don't know, I'm just kind of balancing everything protein but from whole sources like tofu tempeh soy curls um beans focusing on those types of protein sources getting the right balance to just make my body feel good so german potato salad some soy curls and hopefully a big side salad i'm going to make a homemade salad dressing today i've got a little bit of extra free time today my schedule's not quite so busy this week is all at home, back on my normal schedule in Charlotte, no traveling. So I'm going to the gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I went yesterday morning, did an awesome leg workout. Tomorrow is gonna be a shoulders workout. Friday will be a full body workout, just using the workouts from my Naturally Stephanie app. All of these resources are in the video description below um the protective diet natural stephanie other places where i get recipes in the description below pictures of what i eat are going to be on instagram and facebook at jennifer parsley wellness so you'll see more uh, comments around just green tea herbal tea water and maybe a late lunch and dinner and then getting more into just dinner that's where I'm at with my plan of releasing these extra pounds, getting to the low end of the BMI. Today, I have time to talk to y'all about some mindset things, which I absolutely love. I have so many insights from this book, the first book that I finished in 2023. I haven't been doing so great at reading books before bed. I can get back to that. Um, ooh, have I even finished a book in February? Have I? I think I finished two books to kick off the year back to back. Yes, I did. I finished two books. They were both in January, but that kind of counts for January and February. My goal is to finish all the partially read books that I have laying around at a clip of about one per month. So given that today's the last day of February and I haven't really finished a book in February, maybe I'll get back to reading before bed. But so many wonderful insights from here. So... Page 201, The Reality Revolution, The Mind-Blowing Movement to Hack Your Reality by Brian Scott. Uh, this is all about intuition and accessing the flow state, accessing your higher self. It's 
some really cool insights and exercises here that you could give it a try and see if it helps with mindset and just achieving the things that you want to achieve in your life. Uh, okay, flow states, page 201, flow states are not in line with prediction of the future, but the opposite. Athletes and artists can turn off the part of the brain that lives in the future and settle into an intuitive grasp of the present. So the power of now, you know, the famous book by Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, turn off those thoughts about being in the future or things that happened in the past, feeling bad about the past, worrying about the future. Um, you know, people get into this flow state and they're just in the now. Intuition is the ability to rely on the truth you feel in your body in a relaxed state. And I do this a lot. Like I'm, I don't know if it's the older I get or the more work that I'm doing on myself and my spiritual growth, but I'm at this point in my life right now where I'm requiring a lot of quiet time, free time. It's absolutely the best when I have the whole house to myself, it's just me and the pets, and it's not super quiet because they're building a house next door and they're putting a pool in on the, on the other side, so there's a lot of construction noise. But sometimes, depending on the area of the house I'm at, or if they're taking a lunch break, which I think they are right now, it quiets down a little bit. And um, especially early in the morning too, is a great time for me to do this. I just reach a point where I need to think. And I'm like, I don't even want to listen to any of my favorite YouTube YouTubers or podcasts or any of the people, you know, people that I listen to, like Brian Scott, about spiritual growth and growth in my life and achieving the things that I want in the important areas of my life. A lot of times lately, I'm like, nope, I don't want to listen to anybody. I just need time to stop and listen to myself. So intuition is the ability to rely on the truth you feel in your body in a relaxed state. Our stressful environment makes it difficult to identify the level of relaxation, to identify that level of relaxation, but it is our natural and truest state. It's like you're just letting, releasing all the other clutter and stresses of the day or what everybody else needs, or what you think you need to do on the to-do list, like release it all. It's our natural and truest state. It is an openness that gently observes and is completely unworried. It is the childlike part of yourself that has never been touched by the ups and downs of life, holds a broader perspective, and can be aware of the truth. And yeah, I call it my higher self. And I know when my higher self or my intuition is talking because it requires me to be in a quiet, relaxed space. It happens, I'm sure for a lot of people, it happens in the shower. It happens when you're driving your car, when you're doing something very calm and relaxed. And then those thoughts pop in. I call it popping in. So that's your intuition, that's your higher self. And especially if it is a message that is positive, supportive, loving, if it's anything negative, that's not your higher self. That's your mind, that's your ego, that's your hijacked amygdala, the fight or flight part of your brain. All messages from the higher self or the intuition are positive and supportive for your life path. I truly believe that. There's a little, a few little exercises here. Uh, one way to access a relaxed part of your brain is to separate from normal patterns, is to ask yourself, <laughs> I didn't read that sentence very well. One way to access a relaxed part of your brain that is separate from normal patterns is to ask questions of yourself. Ask questions that put you into a more intuitive state of mind. And he gives a few examples that I don't think are particularly great, but higher spiritual questions unlock intuition. Asking questions like this help us act as though we're in, intu we're in an intuitive mode and then we become intuitive. And so and some better examples here, um, separate from your normal brain patterns, 
and write down a question like, how can I be happy? Or my examples of good questions that, and it, to me, it doesn't have to be in question that puts you in intuitive state. It's whatever it is that you're wanting an answer to in your life. This technique of accessing your intuition, accessing your higher self. Like for example, me taking some time like, okay, what do I need to do to be at the weight that I want to be at? What do I need to do to release more pounds? What does my body need? Like kind of take it down to a basic level. And then in that quiet, relaxed state, not in the future, not in the past, taking a little time, the answers that pop in, to me, they're quiet answers. They're like whispers and they're positive and supportive and you can close your eyes and it's like, I always get an answer. So take an important question that you need an answer, would like an answer to, and then the ideas will come in. So it's like when I stop, stop running around, stop all the stressful days, what do I need to get back to? More fasting came back to me. So along with kind of adding in protein and, and trying some bodybuilder methods, I was ha eating like five times a day like the bodybuilders tell you to do breakfast and then a smoothie after your work morning workout and lunch and an afternoon protein bar and a dinner and, and it was like when I sat down with my intuition my higher self I was like girl you don't need to eat five times a day <laughs> it's probably gentle and nicer than that attitude <laughs> but that's the gist of it girl you're not underweight trying to put on muscle like those two, that Irish and uh, Scottish girl you listen to. you never been underweight a day in your life. <laughs> girl, you don't need to eat five times a day. The fasting is good and eating when you're truly hungry. And what comes with that, that's the pure message that's coming through, eating when I'm truly hungry. When I had that slice of homemade rye bread with hummus, beautiful whole plant foods, um, and I was truly, truly hungry by five o'clock and I didn't want to go to the level of insanely hungry. So I found some food that nourished my body and that felt good. And that's guidance from my higher self. Um, and what else was I going to say about that? Oh, it was about eating when I'm truly hungry. And so my higher self is telling me, and I would know it, I would sit down to have a smoothie um, or eat one of those protein bars and I'm like, I'm just eating this to get grams of protein in my day. I knew that I wasn't hungry. I didn't feel physically hungry. And so those things, that's another way to recognize your intuition or your higher self is when you, when you can say, oh, like I know deep down inside, that's something I know inside or my, something in me is trying to tell me. So you can picture it as higher self or looking inside. When I knew inside, I'm eating and I'm not hungry. This probably is not good for weight loss. Like that entire thought came to me multiple times. Like, oh, you're having another meal. You're not hungry. This is probably not going to be great for weight loss. So it's just like that gentle nudge from my inner self, my higher self, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so then he gives a cool little technique which probably not a lot of you know this guy, but I'm totally into any shows that are about healers, mediums, even these ghost hunting shows, people who are connecting with people on the other side. I love them. I can't stand the ones that are like provoking spirits or put some sort of negative uh, horror show thing. I can't stand. There's a lot of ghost shows out there. My favorites are Amy and Adam. Uh, they were from the original Ghost Hunters show, and they've got their own show, Kindred Spirits, they call it now. And they have such a beautiful way of connecting with spirits in a home or people who call them or having issues with spirits. That's a bit of a side note, but I like these types of shows. So there's this guy, Tyler Henry, the Hollywood Medium, and he had like one or two seasons of a show called Hollywood Medium. I love him. I wish they would bring his show back or bring it back to Hulu so I can watch it. 
And he's just this young psychic medium and he somehow got hooked up with all these Hollywood celebrities and would do readings for them and he was super accurate. And this technique at the bottom of page 201, write down a question in a positive frame, such as how can I be happy? Or how can I, uh, how can my body be healthier? How can I reach the healthy weight that I want to achieve? And then activate your subconscious by circling the question over and over again while you think about the question. And this medium, Hollywood medium, Tyler Henry, when he would work, he would sit down with his client and he had this scratch pad of paper and he had a pen and he would just scribble. He called it scribbling and it helped him bring through the message. And so it's so interesting to me that Brian Scott has this, almost this exact same technique here. And I've never tried it because I'm to the point where all I need to do is just get quiet Get quiet with myself, sit down, kind of rest, lie down is the best for me. Even just sitting down and getting quiet, I would do it before, I do it before every client that I have, whether it's massage, sight K, healing touch, healing touch for animals. I do some grounding, centering, taking that time to get in touch with my higher self. I know when I'm there, I know when the messages are coming through, but I've never tried this technique. So write down your question, then just start circling it over and over again while you think about it. And the Hollywood medium, he did his scribbles with his pen. And then he got to the point where his very famous clients would say, can I have that? And they would take this piece of paper that he just scribbled all over while the messages were coming through. And some of them would frame it and they wanted to keep the scribbles and they were all, they all started hearing about him and then he'd come for a reading and they'd be like, oh yeah, I know about the scribbles. And he would also start to sweat when he got messages and they're like, yeah, we know about the sweating. We know about the scribbles. He had just his exact technique for getting messages from the other side or messages from his higher self, client's higher self. And I connect with um, the other side. When I work with a client, I call in what I call my team and their team. My God, my guides, my angels, my higher self, my ancestors, and my soul family. And then I ask for, and I ask to them to bring through any and all messages that need to come through for my client. And this is for any modality that I'm working with a client so that I can be intuitively guided to work with my clients. And then I call in my client. I attune to my client. I attune to the love of my client's higher self. I've grounded, centered, attuned to the love of my higher self. I tune to my client and then I call in my high client's team, their God, their guides, their angels, their higher self, their ancestors, and their soul family and ask for any and all messages that need to come through. And when I'm working, especially during healing touch sessions, which is about healing on all levels, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, I and I'll end the session, I'll have like a whole page of um, messages for my clients. It's usually from their higher self, their family. I can get messages um, from I call it ancestors, but anyone who's passed over in their family, like a message from their mother, but it can even be from someone who's alive, like the higher self version of their mother or father or think people that impact their lives. So I've really honed this intuition and this communicating a bit beyond the veil in myself, but these are fun, cool techniques to just, you know, take that quiet time disconnect from the future, the past, be in the now, try this technique of circling a question over and over again. A few other ideas here, uh, answer yourself from a higher perspective. How might your confident self answer the question? Or I say, how would my higher self answer the question? How would my inner self, my inner being answer the question? So just sort of play with those concepts as well. And then he's got some breathing techniques. So visualizing breathing in through your crown. So like you're taking in things through the crown chakra, the top of your head and taking in information from source or from your team, all those things that I mentioned, God, guide, angels, higher self, 
ancestors, soul, family, kind of breathe as that comes in and let it flow through you. Imagine your higher self answering the question, let go completely. Often the answer will come instantly and undeniable. Undeniably. <laughs> Having problems reading today. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to share that. That was a really cool page and techniques that stuck out about contacting or getting in connection with your intuition, your higher self to get answers and guidance in your life because that is who knows best about your life. You do. Your inner wisdom, your intuition, your higher self, whatever you want to call it, the answers are there. It's good to get information from other people, inspiration from other people, but what you need for your life and your path, your health, your healing, it's all in there or slightly out there in your own energy field, your spirit, however you want to look at, and you have access to it. It's pretty cool. So give these techniques a try. Feel free to put any uh, anything you find, anything you want to share in the comments down below. Any questions for me in the comments. And go check out Jennifer Parsley Wellness for what I eat, pictures of what I eat, descriptions, sometimes even enough information, kind of recipes. I might do some more recipe videos. There are a few super quick and easy things that I haven't already done a recipe video for. But look around on my channel. I've published tons of recipe videos, me cooking blog recipes, me cooking my own recipes. There are ideas for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, travel, all sorts of recipe videos on the channel already. Uh, I may do a few more of those, but I'm absolutely loving the mindset information because all the wisdom is there. And then all the resources are out there for you. I try to share all the resources that are helpful for me and hopefully helpful for you as well. If you like these videos, feel free to give a thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you want to continue to watch my journey to get to the weight and the BMI that I want to be at in my 50s. I turned 51 on May 3rd this year, so about two months away. So it'd be nice to hit some of my goals, have my new jeans, and be well on my way to being the weight that I want to be in my 50s by the time I turn 51 on May 3rd. I was talking to Simon about that. I was like, turning 50 was a shock to my system. I wasn't happy about it. I was resisting it. But now that I am and I'm turning 51, I'm like, I'm already talking about in my 50s. I'm a woman in my 50s and I've come to grips with it. I'm embracing it and I'm going to be the healthiest, happiest version of myself in my 50s. And that's where I'm at. All right. I'll talk to you in a few days, friends. Bye.